we're going to get started because we have a lot of awesome stuff to cover. So on tonight's show, we're going to be digging into one of the most crucial facets of a team that can make or break your season, regardless of how good or average a robot is. And we're going to be starting with scouting. So everybody on this team, uh, or everybody that's on tonight, um, is on a pretty heavy-hitting um, region of FRC, whether it's a district or regional model, sorry, California, um, that has consistently dominant teams, including your own. So what are the role, what role do you have on your teams and how is it related to scouting? And what do you do leading up to the season to best prepare for it? So why don't we start with Katie, since this show was basically curated off of all of her awesome content that's been on Delphi. I'm good at this already. Uh, <laughs> I, for, I didn't hear your first question. But so, to answer, oh, go on. I was going to say, um, what do you do on your team in terms of scouting? And how do you kind of best prepare for the season coming up? Or how did you end up in a scouting role on your team as a mentor or even as a student at one point? Um, I'm going to give the long story because I want to. So when I was a student on UPS, I was a uh, a driver and I found out strategy was really interesting. And then as I kept going, I realized that like strategy was useless if you didn't have good scouting data. So then I got like really hype about scouting. scouting. Um, and then by my senior year, I actually got to um, uh, be a drive coach at IRI for my team, which was like pretty awesome. So that's how I got into it. Um, when I was on 1296, I joined as a programming mentor uh, and right before I had joined, their scouting mentor had like left. So it quickly became one of those fill in the role that's like empty. And I just really loved it. And with 1296, I really started to learn how to get better at scouting um, because we had no system. And so we had to build it from the ground up. And so in the off season, the biggest thing is just like going through what we did previously and how we can fix that, um, how can we can improve everything. And like, really the biggest thing is just iterating on our scouting database, because that's incredibly important. Yeah, absolutely. So Brennan, what do you do on your team? Um, and what does your team do to best prepare for the upcoming season? Yeah, so we, well, I am a uh, lead mentor actually of uh, 4476. And my kind of main area of expertise is the strategic design and managing of the scouting system and the strategy. I'm also the drive coach for for the team. So, I mean, what what do we do to prepare? Similar to similar to Katie is we we do some training um, with off-season events, get people involved in in scouting, iterate on um, you know, scouting methods and and your your database and your data collection uh, methods. That's basically what we do pre pre-season, I guess. Pretty awesome. And Carl, so why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself because you are a current student. Yeah, so I'm a current student on Citrus Circuits. I lead our software scouting sub team, um, which is responsible for all the electronic aspects, um, all the software of our scouting system from collection to processing and then displaying that data. Um, so it's a 17 person sub team. Um, and right now over the off season, we're working on how we could redo the scouting system from last year. And we tend to look at how we can improve it over the off season to prepare for the next year. That's pretty epic, 17 person sub team. So this can go out to all of you guys and anybody can jump in and answer. So what team's experiences or resources have made the greatest impact on how you view and approach your role on the team as somebody that's really taking charge of scouting? Yeah, Katie, let's start with you. Um, roles and resources. So one of the best resources um, I found on 1296 that I hope to bring to 253 is special stand chairs for scouts. Uh, a lot of the places where we scout have, or like go to compete have these awful bleachers. And um, we did this rule that we just started in 2018 where if you're scouting, you get to sit in this awesome chair, but if you're not scouting, you can't sit in that chair. And so every chair is tied to a clipboard. So if you're in that chair, you get that clipboard. And it just really streamlined the process of like, who's scouting, what robot. Um, if I'm looking for like who my scouts are, I just look for the chairs. Uh, and it just really helps because we also would rotate scouts out both on 1296 and 253. And so it's really nice to have just a really easy way to see who's scouting. Um, and then 
other resources is 253 does everything via Google Forms, which like has pros and cons, but that's been incredibly useful as well, uh, just because everything's on the internet and instantly accessible. I'm obsessed with the chair idea. That's absolutely brilliant. <laughs> um, Carl, what about you? What are some of the things that you personally have looked at that you're like, oh man, like that's that's awesome and kind of inspired you to do something maybe a little different on Citrus? Um, some of the resources that inspired me the most was the legacy left behind by previous students on Citrus circuits. Um, so we first had an electronic system in 2013. Um, and so the, the software that was written, the documentation, all that stuff, and seeing how it was done in the past um, with just two students really inspired us, um, inspired me to, like, our team's focus on scouting, the dedication, how we have 17 people on a sub team for scouting is really inspiring. Um, from other teams, uh, last year, 2468 um, Team Appreciate, we were with them at the Utah Regional, and we saw them using a QR data transfer system, uh, QR codes. Um, and that inspired us to recreate our data transfer system in the 2018 season. That sounds really interesting, and I kind of want to learn more about that. And Brendan, what about you? What were some of the things that, you know, in the past that inspired you or given you really good ideas or teams that were doing different things? <laughs> yeah, so uh, student-wise, I was on a 2809, so I was leading the scouting database, um, just, you know, messing around with Excel and different numbers, so that got me kind of hooked. And then kind of my inspirations from different teams are largely from uh, two, two main teams, 11-14. I had the, the pleasure of scouting uh, with them for a partial of, partial of an event uh, in 2012. So learned a lot from them and uh, obviously Karthik's talks. And then also uh, 1678 and some of their great resources that they have from the um, kind of talks that they've done with some of their mentors and students describing their system. That's pretty epic. So I'm curious to hear about, like, how does your team scout? What do you scout? Um, and how, I guess, you know, how has that evolved, um, you know, over the last few seasons? Because we've seen a lot of approaches, like, to scouting with the way that the games have been so different in the last few years. So, um, Katie, how does your current team scout? So... Am I good? Yep, you're good. Okay, sorry. So 253, uh, I actually wasn't heavily involved in setting up our scouting this year. Um, when you join a team, you generally kind of like see how things go before you're like, let's make all these changes. <laughs> uh, but one thing that they did was 2019 is a weird game. It's a really hard game to scout because, not scout, but like scout efficiently because there's just so many things and things that depend on other things happening. So like, how many hatches did they place? How many cargo did they place? Well, that changes based on how many hatches were placed. Like, uh, everything's, it's awful. Uh, I really hated <laughs> 2019 as far as like scouting. <laughs> but um, the big approach is just collecting the useful information. So what's useful is knowing what are their abilities, where are their abilities like most applied, and then using that to figure out like what we can do um, so when we had to make a pick list at uh, Monterey Bay, that was a crazy scenario because the kids had never been in that. And so it's like, all right, let's go through our scouting data. And just, I think that was a good experience because then they, were, they realized what we're doing that's good and what we're doing that's just busy work. Um, and that was really, really beneficial. And so I'm curious to see how we move forward. I've heard about Scantron sheets as a way to do data transfer. And I'm like very interested in that idea. Uh, and also I just want to quickly give a shout out to Spam because their poor man's scouting system was the only reason I know how to make a scouting system in Excel. That sounds pretty amazing. I'm awful with Google Sheets and Excel. So it's nice to know that there's help out there for those of us who aren't very good at it. Yeah, Spam's um, got you covered. So I, I think it's really cool that you mentioned like joining a new team and seeing how they do things before completely like changing things up. And I'm sure for the students, it was like a really cool experience to have you there, like an experienced person uh, creating a pick list and stuff. That must have been a pretty crazy experience. I can't imagine like putting a pick list together for the first time, like as a team. Um, so 
Carl, why don't you tell us a little bit about how Citrus does scouting? Because I, I know it's the craziest one out there, apparently. It's supposed to be really good, but I have no idea what it's like. Okay, um, so we have, um, we scout on tablets. Um, so they're 7-inch tablets with touch screens, and we have 22 people watching every match. Um, so those are 22 active people. We bring about 29 people to competition for scouting. Um, and so 18 of those scouts um, are scouting objective data. Um, so three of them are assigned to each robot. Um, and that allows us to compare their data um, to minimize discrepancies or whatever. Um, and we have four people walk, getting subjective data. Um, so this year, that was their driving ability, how fast the robot can drive, how agile the robot is, and then also when they got into like, defense, like pushing battles, um, or any sort of defense or counter defense played. Um, we also collect data in the pits. Um, so we collect basic robot information like motors, um, drivetrain, whatnot. We take photos. And then we also test their compatibility on our climbing ramp. Um, a couple other things we do is we take match video for every match. Um, and then something unique about our system is not only do we have a large number of scouts, um, but we also do five hours of scout training before each competition, um, or two and a half wow. for if a scout has a second competition. Wow. Yeah, can you tell us more about that? The scout training? Yeah, is it five solid hours, or do you actually like get them <laughs> chopped up between um, like so a few days? Yeah, it's two two and a half hour sessions, um, and there's usually a break in the middle of them, and it's so, just watching match video. Okay, so you you have like old match video, and you kind of go through it as a team and explain like what to be looking for, and like do you use that opportunity to test out your actual scouting system as well, rather than just training people? Yeah, it's an opportunity for us to test our software. Um, additionally, during the scout training, we have everyone watch the same robot. Um, and this is something new we did for champs this year. And then we take all their data and compare it. So we, in real time, identify any errors in the data and point them out so they can understand like the parts of the, the scouting they're getting wrong or where they should be focusing their efforts. That's pretty amazing. And how many mentors do you guys have working with um, like you as the lead scout? Um, so last year, we had no software mentors on our team. Um, but for the 2019 season, we had two software mentors on our team. Nice. Um, but it's both their first year. That's pretty incredible. And Brennan, what about you? I know you're the only person here that's in the district model, and I'm sure the way that you your team collects scouting information is a little, <laughs> perhaps a little different. Yeah. Um, well, we use a paper system. We're transitioning into a tablet system, hopefully for, for 2020, which is exciting for us. But uh, much like 1678, we also run um kind of scouting training sessions before each event uh basically there's two purposes for the for us for that is one to train the scouts obviously and then the second is to gather information from people who have actually scouted uh to get some feedback on the system uh the other thing that uh, is interesting uh is um something that's really important that i think a lot of teams uh who are you know, have decent scouting systems, but are looking to take it to the next step is data validation, which is sort of similar to what, uh, you know, uh, Carl was talking about just a second ago, how the way that they do it is having multiple people uh, scout the same robot. That way you make sure that you have good data. Uh, we take a different approach. We uh, get the information from uh, Blue Alliance um, and alongside with, you know, reading the scoreboard and making sure that we're, we're, matching it up there's a there's an image of that like so when we're inputting all of our data basically what we do is we verify that all the numbers make sense so uh you know if we're missing three points we know somebody probably missed a cargo score or something like that so we make sure that all of the the data that we are taking in uh makes sense i guess the other thing that we do that is kind of unique is we uh practice field scout so we are always have a person on the practice field especially at districts and um District champs, not not so much at, at uh, champs since it's all combined, but uh, we have them taking notes, uh, making sure, um, you know, figuring out what they're working on. Uh, that's useful because we know if they have new autonomouses that they're potentially going to pull out, especially as it comes to, uh, you know, alliance selection. Um, people are trying to get things working. Maybe they have a climber or something or uh, a mechanical issue that we could help uh, solve. Uh, so that when we pick them, there may be something that's easy for us to, you know, make a quick change and, and get them with their mechanism running. Mm -hmm. And do you guys um, typically scout 
webcasts of other district events that you're not competing in for district champs? Uh, informally, yes, or sometimes for like uh, training purposes, but uh, it's not something that we do regularly, uh, like officially. Mm -hmm. And with um, Ontario going to, you guys had two fields this past year at district champs, right? Or at, sorry, is it provincial yeah, champs? Two years. Yeah, um, provincials. Sorry. Um, so how did you handle that with your team? Did you have um, part of your scouting team like watching some of those matches or, you know, keying into them every so often? Yeah, well, the, the nice thing about uh, for Ontario is uh, the matches aren't played simultaneously. They're played back to back so that we alternate between fields. So, uh, you know, the scouts get a bit of a taste of what hap what's happening on the other side of the field. Mm -hmm. um, so we don't we don't officially scout anything, um, you know, but they, they are paying attention to those other matches mm -hmm. as well. That's pretty awesome. So um, you guys were all talking about the collection of data. So you do it, whether it's on a tablet, some crazy, you know, software that you have or even on paper. Where do you draw the line when it comes to too much data? This past year, like Katie was saying, there were so many variables to you know, like what a team could do or an action that could happen or unhappen if a team like, you know, knocked into their rocket. Um, how, how do you draw the line between too much data and, you know, never enough? Katie, I'll pick on you. You can <laughs> go for this one. Uh, so one of the easiest ways for me to prune down what I like am and am not going to record is looking at things like in our last event, what columns in our spreadsheet did we never look at? You know, did we ever look at where they started? Okay, we're probably not going to use that. Like, we're not there yet. Um, I would say that, like, I'm working on, I've worked, have worked on growing scouting teams, not quite, like, perfected scouting teams. So I come from that perspective. And so it's a lot of, like, okay, if we're not using where they start because we're freaking out, like, because we just don't have the ability to, then let's not collect it. Let's not spend too much time on that. Um, and then, like, between events too, just reducing and re like looking at everything and saying, what did we use? What didn't we use? What do we wish we had? Um, so like this year we were checking, like if they drove an autonomous or not, or if it was just pre-programmed, it was like, I don't know if it's necessary. Maybe we should get rid of that. Cause we just, mm. we never look at it. Yeah. Um, and I think yeah, just iterating between events is like really important mm -hmm. like and across years too. Yeah, I was going to say, I can imagine for, you know, luckily teams that are in districts are able to kind of go and modify the information that they're collecting. Whereas I can imagine for regional teams, it's difficult if you're only doing, you know, one or two regionals. It's like, okay, like where you don't have a ton of time in between to iterate. Um, Carl, so you guys have obviously refined how you collect data and what collect or like what data you collect and why. Um where do you think the line is between too much, um, not enough, or all the data? Um, for us, I think the line is when the amount of data we're collecting impacts accuracy. Um, and so this is actually a problem we have um, where we have a tendency to collect too much data. Um, and we do sort of a similar thing where we look at, like, at a regional, what data fields did we actually end up using? Um, and we'll narrow it down from there. Um, we do have a little bit more give. Um, since we have 18 scouts, we have more accurate data. Um, for us, we found that having 18 scouts improves our data by about 20% of the accuracy. Um, so we can collect more data fields while still maintaining that accuracy. That was a very good answer. <laughs> um, and Brennan, what about you? Yeah, I mean, pretty much to go off of both of what they said, both bang on. Uh, you know, in general, <laughs> I think it's better to um, collect less data and make sure that your data that you do have is correct rather than. Uh, you know, going all out, um, you know, making sure that what you have is is right, because even if you don't have data, at least you know that you don't have data and you're not making decisions based off of, you know, numbers that may be incorrect, which is going to just lead to bad things. Yeah, definitely. So before we hop into some of the questions from um, Discord, we're going to talk about our, oh, just kidding. Tyler has a question for Katie. <laughs> Yeah. 
Um, do you just mean like in the situation where we're just not used to being in a picking position? Or? <laughs> uh, yeah, so Tyler, can you repeat the question to me and I'll repeat it to Katie so everybody can hear it. <laughs> So, Katie, your team at your first regional this past year, you guys were selected to be on an alliance, right? Yes. Yes. Okay, so Tyler's question was, how did that impact um, the next event where you guys became an alliance captain? Like, do you think it had an impact on your students and how they kind of viewed why your team was chosen or how teams were picked? Or, like, how did your first experience at the first event you guys went to and being able to, you know, contribute to the strategy and some of the, like in giving some of your scouting data to your Alliance captain, like how did that impact going to your next event, I guess? So um, I would say one of the biggest impacts is that we ranked pretty highly at SFR, which was like, all of our minds were blown about that. Um, and so I told the kids like, you need to make a pick list just in case. Um, Cause when, you, when you're in the top 16, you never know what can happen. Um, and it was my first California event, so I really had no idea what would happen. <laughs> so they made the pick list. Uh, they made it over Discord. I, like, signed in. I was like, here's my two cents, and okay, you guys do this. I'm going to bed. Uh, <laughs> so they made a pick list, and I think that was the first time they ever had to look at their data and see what they had. Um, we actually didn't have that much time between our first and second event. They were literally a week apart, wow. which is great when you want to improve things. Uh so between events, there wasn't really much we could change because everyone also had to take time off to like catch up on homework and housework. Um, but I think what did help is that, oh my God, our scouting data kind of matters. Let's take it seriously. Um, and I do think the uh, girls who were running our scouting team were much more on the ball about like making sure people were scouting and like encouraging them to scout. And so... I think when you find out you're in this position where you might have to help make a decision or make a decision, um, it really, really emphasizes like why getting the information is important. Yeah, I think that's pretty cool to see though that it like it impacted them and it was a good surprising experience that you know you were in that picking position at your second event. So before we head into some of the questions from discord um we're gonna start our giveaway so team 971 wants to remind you that you have until the end of wednesday for the rsvp forum in the spartan series workshop um but oh wait just kidding wait are we giving away stuff right now tyler yeah um so if you want to win the keyword that you need to type into chat which i will spell for you in a moment because i had to ask tyler how to pronounce it um is tachyon so T-A-C-H-Y-O-N. So blow up chat with that. So some of the questions that we have, um, a lot of them were based around, you know, either having no people to a tiny amount of people to like a gajillion people. So what about teams who have no people to scout at all? What's the best way to beg other teams for data? And ne NecroCreature313 um, wants to know that. So anybody have any advice for them? Yeah, so I uh, used to be on a VEX team, so was scouting in a large or like a small pool of people. Um, for us, it, it was not easy. Uh, VEX is a little bit different, as is with FTC, where it's only two, uh, two, two robots on each alliance, but same kind of principle. Um, what we did is limited our data um, to just the very minimum making sure that we're just counting like scoring objects, not talking about defense, that kind of stuff. And the other thing that we did is uh, live work on a list um, to kind of give us an idea of how the different uh, robots are, are, are kind of filling out through that um, event. This works especially well for us. We use the similar kind of concept during uh, off-season events when it's one day and there's a quick turnaround and you don't have a lot of time to talk about a list. Um, so I, I, if I remember correctly, one of them was FTC cited. So for that, that's what I recommend. Mm -hmm. Anybody else have advice on that? Um, as far as asking teams for data, 
I know at least at Chance, I saw a team who had a whiteboard in their pit and said, if you want data, go to this link. Um, and I think as we like move forward, everything in robots is getting far more open source and like people are much more willing to share. Um, and so like look for the people who are sharing and then just ask politely. Uh, <laughs> I remember back when I was a high school student, I had to ask Tyler for data so that my team could make a pick list for something. Uh, and it's just, just ask nicely. Um, and if you can join a scouting alliance uh, or start a scouting alliance, because it's an easiest way to get more eyes on the field, even if they're not from your team. That's a really great idea. And Carl, what about you? Uh, same thoughts. Um, Scouting alliances, we don't have any experience with them, but we've heard they're pretty great, um, and we've seen a lot of them. There's also like open source initiatives where there is um, like online scouting alliances, um, electronic systems where they share data, um, and then also um, like as Brendan was mentioning, keeping it simple. Um, the we I've had experience in um, VEX, and if you keep it simple enough, sometimes you can clip scout um, two robots at once. That's awesome. So. Um, what is your thought on pit scouting? Katie, go for that one. Uh, pit scouting. <laughs> Don't ask questions, uh, just observe. So is their pit clean? Um, how does the team work together? Like if they communicate well, that's probably a good sign. Um, and then if you're going to ask questions, I would ask questions about like, hey, do you need help with anything? Because um, if your team has the ability to help other teams, not all teams do, uh, give, them, give them help. Why not? Um, and again, or Nate wants to know uh, what role should qualitative metrics, anything that isn't numeric, play a role in scouting? So, Brennan, what do you think about that? Sorry, I was f super focused on the pit scouting thing. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, yeah, so qualitative metrics are hard. Um, I think one of the best things you can do is the, the 1678 method, which is, you know, ranking the the teams individually uh from like one to three best to worst um and and kind of doing some sort of uh comparison or like basically opr calculation with that kind of stuff um a lot of teams try to do um you know rank one to ten for things but generally that's a a big mistake uh because you have uh, biases with what people are doing or what what people say Say for example, you're you're trying to rank defense. That's a, one of that's really common, right? Uh, my ten may be your five uh, on your scale, and so mm -hmm. trying to balance those scales is really hard. And what you can do is just by ranking one to three, you know, best to worst on that specific alliance, it it helps uh, kind of take some of that uh, guesswork out of that. So add on um, to what Brendan was saying. Uh, to add on to what Brennan was saying, um, we've there's other problems with uh, cardinal ranking systems as well. So like one to ten is a cardinal ranking system. Um, you have biases from the robot, other robots in that match, or from seeing like a really good robot in the last match. Um, and then the system we use, the one to three, it's ordering the teams from best to worst, is an ordinal ranking system, and it allows you just to make the comparison of this team is better than this other team. Um, and for us, we limit it to three teams on one alliance to make the comparison simple. And we found that you get a lot more accurate data out of that than a cardinal ranking system. That's interesting. So Stell2431 wants to know, when it comes to scouting apps, what are the pros and cons? And what is the best language to code them in if you wanted to go with that? So Carl, you seem to be pretty uh, well-versed in this. So why don't you answer that one? Um, for languages, it's, it's really, um, it, it depends on your team. Um, if you want a really simple system, Google Spreadsheets works really well. Uh, you can use a Google form to input data, and then you can use just spreadsheet formulas to analyze that data. Um, and you can also build on that. Google Spreadsheets has something called Google App Script, which you can use to, um, I think it's shown on screen right now, uh, you can use to make a custom form using HTML and JavaScript that goes to a spreadsheet. And then if you want to make it more advanced, you can also pull data from a spreadsheet, um, or you can add um, like a display to the side of a spreadsheet. Um, Tyler, can you show that other picture? Um, so you can see here on the side, there's a custom sidebar, and that's something, again, with JavaScript, HTML, and Google Apps Script, um, you can add things like custom pictures um, or that sort of thing. Whoa. Where do, you, like, where do you guys learn all this? Because when Kelly from 1678 joined our team, she's also like a wizard at Google Sheets. Like I just I didn't even know these things exist. <laughs> um, yeah, we just, 
<laughs> we, we know about spreadsheets and then we just tend to explore platforms. Uh, we're always talking to teams about how they're doing scouting and we learn a lot from other teams. Um, like Firebase, the database we used, we learned about from another team um, and whatnot. So Arjun from FTC9794 wants to know, have you found it useful to scout the drive team, seeing if they're arguing during matches, et cetera, during competitions? Brian, I have never had... Oh, oh, go ahead. Sorry. I never had the manpower to do that. Um, I'm lucky if we can get six scouts or seven. And so looking at, like, if the drive team is arguing with each other, well, that's probably a useful metric. It's very hard to record... And it's probably not the best use of resources if your resources are very limited. Yeah, I'm on the same page. Uh, we do make notes of uh, people that we work with or interact with, um, so that there's some some way. Uh, the only the only game that I can think of where teams like legitimately scouted human players was 2009, where like they were super OP and like having a good basketball player could like score more than like most of the good robots. So. Yeah. So Nucker Creature 313 wants to know how do you scout defense? Okay, I can take this one. Um, <laughs> so for us this year, we tried a lot of different things. Um, so we, we had a, we tried a cardinal ranking system um, from one to three of like effective, ineffective, um, or like super effective. Um, and then we had, um, two people who would watch that who were specifically trained to watch defense. Um, we also had them record whenever two robots got in a pushing battle. Um, and we used like an ELO ranking system like they use in chess um, to rank robots and see how good they were um, at pushing other robots. Uh, we also tried something where we looked at every single piece of data we collect as timestamp. Um, and so we looked at whenever a robot crossed onto the other side of a field. Um, and then we looked at every single cycle that was defended. Um, and then we could correlate data to see how cycles were slowed down or like if another robot caused uh, a robot to drop game pieces. And we could calculate the number of points they prevented them from scoring. That's so crazy. <laughs> so um, 5112's programming director wants to know, um, how do you get your scouters enthusiastic about helping <laughs> out and doing their job? So I, I know that Karthik has covered this a little bit in his um, awesome presentation, but besides his gambling techniques with candy, do you guys have any way to keep students like engaged and motivated? All right, so first off, comfy chairs. I'm sorry, I'm gonna take over. Second <laughs> off, uh, they need to be like working on the strategy for every match and like creating a strategy brief for the drive team because otherwise all they think is they're just doing busy work that they're doing because they are. So like you have to make their work useful. And then the third one is make sure your scouts are part of the pick list meeting. They are the most qualified people to be in that meeting. Um, I know this doesn't work out if you're not in a picking position, which most teams aren't, but I think making sure your scouts actually see where their data is going is going to make it like far more enticing because teammates want to add value to their team. But if they're thinking they're just doing busy work, not adding value, then they don't want to do it. And I wouldn't blame them. Yeah, definitely. Um, any other tips and techniques for that? Um, give your scouts breaks if you have the scouts to do it. Um, it's really tedious to scout for an entire day. Yeah, just make sure that they're super valued. Um, you know, one of the big things that we do is make sure that they're trained, right? So if they have to go through a specific, uh, you know, training thing, it's not just that anybody can scout. We don't let just random people scout. Uh, it's a it's a wanted job, and make sure that they feel valued. Mm -hmm. And kind of a follow up question that I have for this is, you know, obviously we're most teams are in the boat of not having like an elite scout team. Um, how do you get new students or kind of younger students that have really short attention spans to see the value of what they're doing? Because it is, I mean, we've all talked about how it's a really tedious process, and it's you know long days, and you're watching the same thing over and over, but how do you, like, is there a way for you to to show them kind of where their data is going, you know, at an event or give them understanding besides being, you know, an alliance captain and having the pick list meeting? Well, I mean, most teams should be using their data for, uh, you know, matches as well. So having them uh, be involved in that process of taking that data, coming up with a preliminary plan and, and, seeing that into action 
can help, I think. I would say also, um, this is very cheesy, but the thing that really uh, got me hooked on like the concept of scouting was reading some guide written by like an alumni of my robotics team uh, who compared scouting to being like a spy. Uh, and I'm one of those people who really likes to take on stupid roles like that. I'm like, I'm spying. Um, but I really think it actually can help, especially if you're easily bored, because if you just think of yourself as like intelligence op, um, it gives a little bit more fun and kind of makes it a game. But like, I've found that's helpful for me. Um, also, I think just if they have a short attention span, don't have them scout for seven hours. <laughs> like frequent breaks are very important. Mm -hmm. And Carl, any? Um, something we do is we, we make sure after every competition and during competitions that we recognize how this data is being used. Um, so we talk about how we were able to get really good picks um, and how we used it for our match strategy. Um, so really emphasizing um, the importance of scouting and how we're actually using that data. Because um, sometimes it's hard for scouts to see how their data is being used, and sometimes it feels like they're just putting data into a database. Um, so we'd like to emphasize how their data is being used. And Miklas wants to know, Carl, um, does 1678 have anything about their Google Sheets code on GitHub? Um, no, we don't. Um, it's, it's very minimal code. Um, the, it's 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 not a very good reference, honestly. It, it was like scrapped together last minute. Um, there's a lot of really good references um, on Google's documentation, um, and you can find example code there. Thanks for watching. If you want more fun content, be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos. You can also directly help support fun by visiting our Patreon at patreon.com forward slash first updates now, or by subscribing at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Thank you to all of our co-executive producers keeping fun loud, live, and independent.